Is the mic on? Hello, everyone. How are we doing? There's a lot of side talk. I can see we have a, a separate conference happening over there on the side. So we'll find out what they're talking about. My name is Chidi. And this is Daisy. Yes. And so we're going to talk about technology and whether technology is actually good for the continent or if it's a red herring. Okay, so Daisy, let's start, just answer that question in general, is what do you think of new tech, not new tech, but tech on the continent? Is it good for us or is, are we, are we kind of doing this sideways? I mean, let's talk about tech, right? There's always a buzz around tech. It's a cool stuff just to be able to, you know, solve real life problems using technology on your mobile phone is efficient. So there's that buzz around technology and what it can do in terms of changing our lives, our lifestyles, and also creating a lot of opportunities. I think it also built out a lot of potentials, but also I could say there are also risks around using technology. It's always not a one size fits all uh, kind of situation. So I think there's also a pro and con that will actually delve deep into as we discuss around the technical aspects of what we do and particularly in the African context. So I think it has, it's a good thing. There's a buzz around it. And just let's see how we can, you know, push us through, through the next stage. Uh, and I'm excited about this uh, talk today. And, you know, uh, just to give some context, uh, I actually had the, the pleasure of going to Estonia in July where I met the ambassador, Lisi, Dolores, uh, Ular, who was on the first panel. And, you know, this is a country that builds itself and deservedly so as the first digital society, right? But what we did notice there was that even though technology was at the core of what they did, you did notice that they were very focused on the citizens. And you can tell that the people were proud of what they had done. So they didn't really talk about technology, technology. It was really about the problems that were solved. How do we, talk to me about, you know, how that translates to us on the continent. Is that happening? Are we doing that? Should we be doing that? How is that, how is that playing out for us? Yeah, so there's a lot of angles that we can look around this. For me, I consider tech an enabler, but we also need to factor in are we building technology solutions that actually solve real problems and for particular use of the people? Um, when I talk about enabler, we can actually utilize technology in multiple ways. It can be a way to make life easier, but not necessarily just change the entire way of how we were actually approaching different problems. It can be a way of us enabling or bringing people together and being able to actually acquire customers effectively, uh, bring down cost of different products and services, and just building something that is very sustainable. When I look at how I started Zuri Health, I had to factor in a lot of things because when you're building something in the healthcare aspect, you need to find out and ask yourself, are you building something that actually has an impact on people's lives? Are people going to use it? Are you touching on the really core problems as to the reason why you built that technology solution? Uh, when I look up, talk about the problems or the key issues around problem solving in the African context, you have to look at the different channels that you're approaching the technology. If you only focus on smartphone-based uh, solutions, are you looking to getting into people who don't have smartphones? And how are you going to incorporate the available digital tools to actually solve that real problem? And a lot of, I got a lot of questions when I did an approach of multi-channel. But the reason why I did this is because I listened to my customers. Because the first time we rolled out our you know, mobile app-based solution, we asked ourselves, but why are we looking, when we're looking at the customer de demogra demographies, the people who utilize that solution are only in urban cities. This actually solves for convenience for people in urban cities. But when you look at now, looking at getting to everyone, we still are leaving out a lot of the population without smartphones. People who live in the underserved communities where there is no you know, good infrastructure, but they have some form of access in terms of mobile inclusivity because what happened is we see a lot of mobile get payment gateways, M-Pesa, 
uh, and financial inclusion for those people, but they'd not necessarily access this through smartphones. So how are you going to build a product that will actually reach those people using the available digital solutions? It doesn't need to be smartphone based. It could be SMS based. How are you able to reach your end users where they are? and just incorporating their societal norms, the cultural practices, but not entirely. Because what I see is some solutions might necessarily work in the other continents, but when you bring it down into Africa, it doesn't necessarily get that adoption. So well, there are a lot of things that are in play in that sector. So, you know, it's interesting because we say if it comes to Africa, it doesn't necessarily get the adoption. Must it? And, you know, this is part of that product, you know, do we do product innovation or are we obsessed with technology? And I wanted to also introduce a word that I spoke to you about, which is yeah. tropicalization. So there's a, a, an entrepreneur, an African entrepreneur who has used the word tropicalization to talk about the, the, how Western companies or even Western VCs, Western uh, even minded entrepreneurs yeah. try to bring Western technology, Western mindset to Africa. Yeah. Talk about tropicalization. Talk about that dichotomy between product innovation and technology obsession and how maybe technology obsession may not necessarily be where we should be going. Yes, we, we don't need the technology obsession, really. Um, and I look at it as when you're building and you're looking at attracting investments, probably you've raised and built a product solution that actually fits the different contexts. When it comes down to Africa, you need to factor in a lot of things. How they measure their key KPIs is different from how we measure KPIs. You can't tell me I have a mobile application, I need to measure it by the number of app downloads. I can have the most beautiful app, but if I don't have paying users, actual users, I'm still not solving that problem. So sometimes you see, we can say, okay, we have different social apps that have really penetrated into the market, but there is, there is a reason as to why we see a lot of people utilizing different smartphone solutions. Maybe it's because it's free to use, but when you involve or incorporate things like you have to now make payments, People are like, oh no, I cannot afford it. Maybe because there are other priorities against others. So when we look at building this info solutions, we need to, to find out how can we incorporate in the African context. It's still robust, it's still growing, but it needs time. You need to factor in the end users' real problems. Yeah before you, you know, create the buzz, obsession around, I want to use this cool smart tech solution. Yeah. So I think that's where I'm coming from. You know, it's interesting, um, and Pesa, everybody talks about it. You come to Kenya and the Kenyans will make sure you drink, eat, sleep, mm -hmm. sleep, eat, drink, and Pesa, right? Um, and speaking of Mpesa, Mpesa tried to go to South Africa, right? Can anybody tell me how well Mpesa is doing in South Africa. So I see the blank stares and that's because it didn't do well. It just didn't succeed. And that's what we are talking about is, you know, it's a great product for the Kenyan ecosphere, Sorry. but it wasn't for South Africa, right? And that's because we tried to, we were obsessed with the technology yeah. as opposed to doing the product work for Mpesa in South Africa. And so I think this is a point that we're trying to make is, Product innovation, she's a chief product officer. I'm a product person, I'm a product coach, a consultant. I used to run product back in the day. And the emphasis that we're bringing here is that product innovation is key. That's how we solve the problems of the continent, right? And we don't tropicalize the Googles of the world. I can see OpenAI. Everybody was obsessed with what happened with OpenAI the last two weeks. I saw Africans actually losing their minds. Oh my God, Sam Altman, Sam Altman. Yeah. What happened to him? And I'm thinking, you guys, that's not, mm -hmm. that's really not your problem, <laughs> honestly, right? Yeah. So let's go into that AI, right? Because another thing you see is a lot of startups mm -hmm. on the continent are starting to say, we are an AI infused goat farming company, or we use generative AI to run our kitchen, right? And what does that mean? Why are we always doing that? Remember when it was crypto? Everybody was talking about crypto. We are a crypto-based goat farming operation. And it just seems like that's the way we think, as opposed to talking about, here's a problem that we're solving, mm -hmm. period. Whether we're using crypto, AI, it doesn't matter. How come that is a problem that we are dealing with? And is that VC 
inspired? Is that, is that something the VCs are making companies do? Yes, and it's hard because sometimes when you, you have to have this nice, innovative approach, sometimes you're overshadowed because there's that craze around fintech, AI, but we live alone a lot of sectors that actually have huge impact on the continent. And when you look at about, when you're looking at also incorporating AI, we, we need to factor in that AI will also be part of an enabler, but it's not necessarily the end goal solution. It will take time for the entire market to be fully adopted into AI. And there's also risks around AI. Talk about some of the untapped sectors. We have agri-tech, we have health tech, we have, you know, financial, but not necessarily, you know, from lending. and Insure all. tech. Insure tech, exactly. So there's so many opportunities, but sometimes when we block ourselves from just, you know, there's only more opportunities or a lot of investors are only looking for AI and fintech. Sometimes it also kills the dreams of entrepreneurs because they're like, okay, maybe mine is not so rosy as well, but you're still solving something. So we need to approach it with a diverse mindset. When we look at, you know, I just want a grasp of that. Right now I'm looking at companies that are using those AI solutions or fintech, they're also now bridging them, the solutions down towards incorporating in the different sectors so they can plug and play. I'll give you an example. There's a way fintech can play a really key part in healthcare. And when you apply a lot of, you know, insure tech services onto healthcare, you're able to bring down the cost of different services. So it's not all about just focusing on one sector, but looking at the things that we already rolled out how can they also be enablers or play a key role in the other sectors and still provide active solution? When I talk about healthcare, we have a lot of like two key problems. I always say one is the cost aspect because many people cannot afford healthcare. And then there's di distribution where you find that a lot of resources are in urban areas and they leave out, you know, people who live in the underserved communities in the rural areas. But if you're able to look at this aspect, the cultural practices, in the African context, most people do not save towards their healthcare. But when you look at how you're able to provide micro billing platforms, you see that there's a huge adoption. Right. Because I'm like, I live below a dollar a day. What am I saving towards? Right. Do I, you know, use my money towards getting food for my family? Or how else do I incorporate this? But if you build a solution that will enable people to utilize the solution through micro, micro billing, you'll see a lot of uptake. We've seen when M-Pesa rolled out, they also you know, launched the Fuliza aspect, which has seen a lot of uptake to it, but it's still a very sustainable model. So we need to look at you know, different ways in regards to our customers, um, cultural practices, societal norms, economic power as well, because um, if we underlook the fact that most people need to have accessible from a financial angle, we might really not solve that key aspect of problem. You know, I'm actually going to just do an aside. I've been looking for the photographer. The guy hasn't taken that picture yet, though. And there's no way. We're not leaving this stage until we get at least 200 oh, yes. pictures. So find that guy, the guy that was lying down on the floor taking pictures for the first panel. Uh, I am going to call that out because I do events, too. And then when they say, Chidi, what were you doing in Nairobi? I'll say I was on a panel, yes. but there's no evidence, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, I, I do want to, you know, let me give, I wanted to give a really interesting example to what you were talking about. So um, the concept of electronic vehicles in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I don't know if there are any Nigerians in this room, but okay, there's a Niger person, which is surprising because usually somehow, somehow we, we show up in numbers. But one of the things I wanted to say was, think about an electronic vehicle in Lagos. Now, what is the number one problem in Lagos? Number electricity. one. Electricity. But you want to launch electronic vehicles. I had a friend, he said, oh, Chidi, we're going to do electronic vehicles <laughs> in Nigeria. And I'm like, who are you solving this problem for? Actually, somebody ended up showing up with a Tesla in Lagos. But do you know what he did? He built a thing on the top of his car that has a generator. So that when he runs out of power, he pulls up to the side and plugs in his generator for his car. That is very unsustainable, right? But it also says that sometimes we get so obsessed with technology that we find ourselves kind of wrapping ourselves into a pretzel, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to solve those problems. Yeah. I also wanted to talk about FinTech, right? Because earlier the speaker uh, spoke about FinTech and how there's more, uh, more, more diversification in funding. 
which I don't necessarily agree with. I think we're still at a place where <laughs> I don't agree with that because VCs are still focused on fintech. I asked ChatGPT AI, and I said, ChatGPT, tell me how much funding Ghost. from a percentage wise uh, fintech is getting. Can anybody guess? Out of 100%, anybody, just shout it. 80. I heard 80. 60. Caleb says 60. One more. 50. Ambassador Daniel, you are so wrong. You should leave the room. Okay? <laughs> it's 71%. Right? 2023. And so, even if we talk about products and solving problems, we're here still funneling most of our capital towards, honestly, a technology that seems to be obsessed over and over again, right? So um, I wanted to, to kind of buttress the point that um, Daisy was making. We have about four minutes. So let me, let's close out on the future, right, of technology in, on the continent. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, you've talked about you're a health tech mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Uh, we talked about insure tech. What, tell me where are opportunities for tech as an enabler for the future of Africa? Um, I have my thoughts on that, but let me, let me see what you have to say. Um, there are a lot of opportunities uh, for tech in a lot of sectors. One, without bias, is healthcare. I think we can all agree. It's only when we had COVID, the pandemic, that actually it exposed the underbelly of the healthcare challenges. And we now understood how we can have, you know, even backup health tech companies that have since, for the last decade, trying to build our solution. But it's only then that people understood, wow, there's actually a problem that this solution can solve. We have a lot of other sectors, agri-tech. We have edu-tech as well. How can you create education and awareness? Particularly when you factor in there are areas or sectors where most people barely go to school because they cannot afford healthcare. But right now, they're all on Instagram, they're on TikTok, they're on different social media channels. How do you get your customers where they are? How do you, you know, build something very innovative and using tech to enable that? How do we lower costs of different services? How do we ensure that in terms of insurance penetration, we utilize what we have. It's a simple device. It can be as simple as just, you know, building something, working with the partners on ground, but also involving the community, understanding what are their key problems or challenges that they face. So this is, these are some of the things that I look at and I see a potential in terms of change and it should highly be driven by also existing digital tools. Don't overlook the fact that there is WhatsApp. How can you plug in your solution on that? How do you plug in the AI tools, not just to be on a standalone, but actually elevate your already ready-made solution or product? How do you validate? How do you ensure data privacy and protection for the people who utilize these services? So there's a lot of you know, growth that we'll see with technology, but we cannot underscore the fact that we also need to educate um, the communities in terms of how good tech can be and also what are the risks of fully immersing yourself with technology. Again, you can have a nice AI tool, but it will take time before you say, I can fully let a uh, tech solution to operate me or cook for me. So there's that, you know, building and just understanding the customer use and also adapting to the different changes. Uh, let's not be too rigid in terms of just building something out there and writing on the one that is tech. Uh, awesome, Daisy. Uh, um, here's, here's my, here are my thoughts on that. You know, one of Africa's greatest in, uh, exports is the creative industry right now, right? We are doing, I mean, look at Tyler, right? I mean, look at what she's doing out there. Um, uh, Burner Boy, I'm at Piano, Afrobeats. You have the, mu uh, the movie industry. We're starting to do some really interesting things. And yet the money is not going there. There's create tech. There's opportunities there. Mm -hmm. If you're an investor, ask the questions. It may, your money, you may not get your turnaround in 30 days, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. But I promise you, the more you invest in that, in that world, you will see some really interesting things. Uh, I did Bima Lab. I was part of the, the product team that developed uh, Bima Lab, which is a, an accelerator for insure techs in Africa. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people are insured on the continent? Just health, 2%. Now think about that. You go from 2% to 5%. You go from 2% to 10%. These are the wicked problems that I think the, the, the future of tech should be addressing on the continent. And so you and I agree that 
there's significant opportunity, and we do believe it's a red herring. We do believe that technology, as kind of the tip of the spear, does not really address the problems of the continent. And so I wanted to thank you, Daisy. We didn't have enough time. You should have given us at least 30 more minutes, right? Yes. Um, but thank you very much for this conversation, and we'll continue it. Maybe we'll do this in Tallinn. Ambassador Daniel, bring the two of us back. We'll do it there, okay? So thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you.